नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ बोधा द धार्मिक व्यू ऑफ एवरीथिंग टुडे वी आर जॉइंड बाय टू यंग गेस्ट्स गेस्ट्स हु आर इन द ऑन द क्वेस्ट ऑफ डेवलपिंग गेम्स विद एन इंडिक लेंस एन सिविलाइजेशनल लेंस अ धार्मिक लेंस वी हैव विद अस सौमित्र मालोचुरु द फाउंडर ऑफ ब्राह्मण स्टूडियोस एंड इज कोफाउंडर एंड सीईओ धीरज चिंतलोरे वेलकम बोथ ऑफ यू thank you thank you thank you ji so uh, as at brihat we work to enable the culture engine and we work to enable creativity in others so that the dharmic movement becomes self perpetuating and the cycle rolls on and it becomes a self perpetuating movement and seeing as today we are joined by a guest who are into game development that is one of those areas in which there has not been a great foray by dharmic forces it is one of the last uh, bastions so to say which has been untouched by our civilizational understanding and due to that paucity of understanding in the game development zone there is also a, a very significant chance of our motifs and our uh, symbols being misutilized so it is a very uh, positive news that people from our own stream and with similar consciousness are joining into this stream so i'll directly be, uh, begin with somitri ji you your journey into game development what made you passion, passionate for dharma and civilization as a whole and how has been the journey of brahman studios this far uh, uh first of all i have been a gamer uh, since i was a very small child uh, i was fortunate enough to get uh, technology into my hands since i was a child and uh, i have always been a big fan of our uh, <coughs> old uh, mythological films uh, like ramayana and mahabharat uh, which actually explored uh, all the dharmic uh, perspectives and uh, also the kind of uh, the epic battles that used to happen between all our uh, old uh, uh, rama maha or like all the mahabharat uh, characters that actually fought in this great kurukshetra um so after many years like uh, it was uh, due to our friendship like me and deeraj uh, we have been friends for over 15 years and uh, although we both had uh, individual goals of wanting to build a game uh, i had mine at uh, in about 7th class when i was playing uh, another game where Uh, we got to uh, create our own mods and maps uh, from the game called warcraft and uh, that was when the first idea had struck me that uh, we could make a game and yes we all uh, we went across our journeys um, and i guess it was in 2020 uh, right before uh, the lockdown uh, that we both decided uh, let's start uh, making a game and that is when uh, although i had like very little knowledge about uh, all of our uh, ancient stories and the dharmic uh, purpose uh, i still had spun a small story uh, between the three brothers uh, brahma vishnu shiva uh, wanting to recreate the battles of uh, the ancient kurukshetra and uh, bringing that uh, those battles in a form of a game to the new age audience uh, to the kids for this new generation as well um so that is where brahman studios was born and uh, the game om uh, also took root and uh, we both uh, ourselves found the story to be really exciting and also the kind of game that we wanted to build was a uh, fast paced uh, multiplayer combat uh, oriented game we'll and we'll come to om we'll discuss it in detail as well it's very exciting okay. and dheeraj ji your journey into game development and yes Uh, so the, like uh, right from the start i was very much uh, this thing interested from uh, right from my this childhood i was always actually playing this uh, games and games and games so actually my this thing father he actually motivated me into actually like making my own game so like right from the childhood i had a dream to actually make our own game but back then it used to be very this thing difficult but uh, right now because of access to technology we are actually able to this thing build it absolutely and being a very amateur gamer myself i can resonate with it when we started gaming and we are all of the same age group when we started gaming there were very few avenues of game development in india and today we are proud to have our own developers developing 
game. So uh, yes, uh, then uh, I would like to ask you what has been the journey so far into Brahman Studios. You established it around two years back, and uh, uh, it has been a great learning experience. And uh, we have spoken about it uh, out of the call as well. But I would like you to take our listeners through the journey because there will be many aspiring people who would like to learn from your experience on how to go about establishing a studio and then creating a game, developing a game, all of it. Dhiraji, you can uh, share your take and something. OK, uh, so our uh, in intention was uh, not to actually make a uh, uh, company as such. Our motive was to actually make, make a game. So the process of actually making the game has actually this thing started first, and then we actually like um, this thing which like uh, we are actually like oh, this work on an actual company. So the this is actually the only like one game that we, we are actually thing, working on as of now. So we had actually uh, started the journey about four years back. Uh, and uh, we floated a company about uh, two years later uh, because we were entirely focused on building the game first. So uh, once we had uh, spun up the story and we thought it was really exciting for us to work on it, uh, so we went back and we started researching. Uh, I had got uh, so I took the uh, the responsibility of uh, taking the creative aspects of the game or building and designing the creative aspects of the game, uh, while Deeraj worked on the development and the multiplayer aspects and the whole uh, uh, building of the technology of the game itself. So over the first one and a half year, we went uh, during the lockdown time, which we utilized to kind of research and uh, build. Uh, the frameworks and the architecture uh, and the story and the narration and so we we kind of like hired uh, uh, one one another uh, unity developer uh, who was required to kind of work on the front end aspects of the game and we built a lot of prototypes uh, we kind of worked on what kind of uh, camera, uh, the perspective that the game will be in. So initially we had always thought we'll make a top-down view game, but uh, by then like uh, other games like uh, PUBG and other games had gotten successful already. Uh, before that, the Indian uh, audience weren't used to 3D games except in the PC and console uh, platforms. But uh, once the people had gotten used to the third person perspective through mobile games that had become a success during the long term time, uh, we thought although it's challenging, we still wanted to deliver the best kind of immersive experiences and kind of do justice to the the lore and the kind of story and the context that we are choosing that is from our Indian culture and our Indian mythology. Um, so there was uh, there was a lot of uh, decisions that we had to take, and especially multiplayer building a multiplayer game itself is uh, pretty hard. It's being done by very few people uh, across in India, and especially uh, which is a non-shooter is going to be a little more difficult. Uh, I guess like Diraj could uh, uh, explore a bit more of that. Okay, so like uh, when it comes to this thing, this thing games and all, usually the games that are being made, they are very much into like uh, you, you have like uh, uh, this thing map, okay, in which you actually shoot and this thing run and all. So we, we just wanted to take a much uh, this thing different approach wherein we actually use our Indian, Indian mythology. Okay, so in, instead of having this thing with guns and all, we have uh, this, this thing bows, we have arrows, we have this thing axes, we have swords. And uh, and also in most of the multiplayer games, uh, what they lack is story and narrative to kind of uh, explain what's going on through the game. So, uh, if if a if a child, for example, plays a shooter game, and if he is in put in like a, a very uh, challenging atmosphere, like his kind of. Uh, uh, narration to use a gun and all it's just like mindless like there is no explanation to just say i'm shooting and like kind of winning the game and that is what we really wanted to tackle uh, and uh, because the context of the story and our indian culture uh, also kind of all uh, like all of our scriptures mostly bhagavad gita and even the entire war of kurukshetra and like uh, krishna telling arjuna like you have to fight 
right you have to fight against your own brothers but there is a reason for it there is a dharma to it because it is your duty and why do you have to do it is to protect everyone else as well so so that kind of a conflict of a situation uh, gives the person a morality and although he is put in the kind of a war war like situation he does it out of a duty and a purpose but not of mindless killing and like kind of violence or anything you know? so that is the kind of uh, perspective and uh, the narration that we wanted to give to the kids that are kind of uh, have lost touch upon uh, with this our uh, ancient uh, culture and uh, dharmic uh, explanation of like how to live your life or like why is what is that so that is why we we always wanted to be different from uh, through other games and uh, we are proud to say after like 4 years of our development we have actually come up with a new kind of gameplay and mechanics for the game that actually uh, does justice to what uh, what we have actually said till now so uh, in our game we, we we can probably say that there's no such thing as killing and there is only like kind of defeating so you on an equal uh, level playing ground you kind of battle yourself out to just to whose will power is stronger and who is like a better warrior in terms of strategy and in terms of like uh, learning and also in terms of like uh, practice of your abilities and skills and so on <clears throat> absolutely and that is a very significant point that you touched over there that video games in general had also while they are a very good instrument of stress relief they also promote sometimes this mindless killing and thoughtless actions shooting and even many games that i remember from my childhood far, far cry max pain all of those they promote uh, they promoted shooting and assassins creed all of that they <laughs> gave that template and this is how video games can be but it is very good that you are uh, charting a different course and it actually has a very grounding in our own civilizational ethos as well where war was not fought to annihilate the enemy or to uh, humiliate them and oppress them but it was fought as a test of kshatriyata as a test of valor can you defeat me can i defeat you what is the uh, ability that i have gained through my tapas and through my swadhyaya i am testing that out so uh, it's a very great thing that you are doing to uh, infuse that into games itself and i'm sure people playing that will learn through it as well and learners if in case you missed one point it, they said ki it took 4 years from inception stage to now exactly the mechanics and game development to nail it perfectly so nothing comes without hard work and from that <laughs> we'll move to the next point especially Om the game, the first game of Brahman Studios. We are all excited for it. Tell us more about it. The elements, the characters, the setting, uh, all of it. Uh, so Om Om is a 3D multiplayer action adventure arena. That's the genre of the game that we are building. Uh, that also we have been working on it, and that's where we have uh, uh, come up till now. and the whole uh, idea the context of om uh, it starts in kaliyuga where uh, uh, the dhar- dharma stands on its last leg and uh, it's almost at the end of uh, you know being destroyed and it is it is in that context uh, where we we are also connecting it to the real world events where like uh, there's like global warming deforestation um abuse and hunger and killings and all of it so uh, what we're trying to do is using the context of the ancient uh, wisdom and uh, and also the current kind of uh, situations or the uh, world that is right now is linked in such a way that most of the people we think that this is kali yuga that is the kind of common narrative so this is where it starts in a uh imaginative world uh just after the war, uh, war of kurukshetra and the, the most of the knowledge has been lost and this is the time when the the kingdoms are encroaching on to the forest spaces and forest dwellers and they're destroying the world and it is during this time that a couple of warriors from the small village uh, with their own weapons and talents that they had honed throughout their life they defend their village 
right and they're really happy and excited and uh, they're all celebrating but then suddenly the whole sky crackles and uh, there's a huge storm there's meteors and the village that they have fought so hard to kind of save is completely destroyed and it is something beyond their own hands that they can't do anything they don't know like if it's human and if there's some people that they want they had learned how to fight with that but if there's some greater forces in work and play and they don't know what to do and so that is then like when we show even that uh, temporarily constructed village although it is destroyed there is this just one ancient temple that was created million uh, many many years ago that withstood this kind of destruction and there is one uh, uh purohit like kind of praying to that so all of these people go there and they ask him like why why do you actually kind of still pray to these gods you know who let this village get destroyed so that is when he says you know there is so much you don't know about like and if if i really have to tell it to you you would have to understand the story of creation and the uh, and the concept of sanatan dharma and we have to restore the balance of dharma and so this is when the warrior himself joins the fight into saving and restoring the universe uh, from getting destroyed and that is is the portal that is the starting point of like uh, where the om uh, game starts off so you can uh, so like the weapons in our uh, game uh, have also been uh, taken from the agni purana uh, like the classification of different oh, weapons nice. so it's like uh, <laughs> it's amukta uh, mukta mukta uh, pani mukta uh, mantra mukta and uh, yantra mukta so each kind of fighting style uh, all, uh, mostly we think like okay these are just like different kinds of uh, weapons that we use but these are actually uh, the fighting styles or different kinds of weapons uh, that people kind of used in those ancient times and classified them as that so for example amukta is a weapon uh, that is always held in hand it is never uh, left it never leaves a warrior's hand so that um, so some uh, weapons for example are like swords and maces gadas for example so all these kind of weapons come into amukta and if you go for mukta mukta it's like uh, a weapon that can sometimes be thrown and hurled uh, at uh, an enemy to kind of do uh, major damage as well so these kind of weapons come under like axes spears and trishuls and you know so on like that Absolutely. and this is uh, you know our literature uh sometimes uh, uh no that's okay our literature provides such a rich corpus of uh, material from which we can draw upon for even any kind of creative work beat movies beat games beat songs even and mm-hmm. that is great to hear that you have uh, sourced the names of weapons from agni purana even the story line is uh, very dharmic in the sense ki the yugas are deteriorating and as the villagers try to defend themselves then they learn from the temple purohit the exact story of creation and the name of the game itself om pranava the first creation sound that matches perfectly uh dheeraj i would like to uh, circle you in in this what are the uh, technical aspects of this game that uh, you would like to share in the sense ki what are the challenges and what are the joys in uh, running a studio and what are the learnings from that in the four years that uh, in the two years that you have uh, poured your heart and soul over the game and then two years as a studio what have been your learnings in the process and how have you grown uh, yourself in that process okay uh, so first of all when we were actually working on the game we always wanted it to be an online game which everyone can actually play because like right from the this thing childhood we have been playing online games and for online games there's a uh, there's an added level of uh, this is uh, this in complexity which is actually involved so the process of actually making the, the actual game we have made it in a way that uh, like uh, we didn't like use uh, like uh, <coughs> the like actual listening approach where other listening game studios actually work. but usually what happens is they work on the artwork first and and then they actually iterate okay so first you actually have the main story you work on the artwork and then and, and then you actually build the characters okay once when the listening characters are done you animate okay. them the and fir- then uh, the, the first step is then story writing then artwork and then putting it into design 
yeah 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 and in into the game and then work on the actual mechanics so because we are actually building an online game the most important thing for us to actually understand how the game feels like if you are a gamer if you are playing the game we wanted mm-hmm. to know like how it actually feels and 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 actually for a multiplayer game the uh, like uh, actually having the multiplayer functionality of the game actually work is like um, more actually because i am actually from a technical background and he 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 is actually like uh, like the elvers with the writing the this thing this thing back story and all he is like an architect of, of the entire game so because of that we wanted to like target the areas that uh, we were actually the best at so so we worked on the actual uh, this thing first we worked on the online aspect so we had an offline this thing prototype okay in in which we actually like saw like how the game actually feels so if any player was actually playing the game how will we actually experience the game and all so we had to work on the uh, gameplay part first and once when we were confident that okay people will actually like it and then we actually started working on the hardcore so the approach that we actually took to in you know in order to actually make this uh, this reality is like entirely different so we worked on our uh, like like whatever we actually strengths. knew knew the bits yeah we worked on our releasing strengths first and then we actually worked on absolutely complementary strengths of the founder that's great and uh, i hear that you guys are now uh, pitching the game to investors at a germany event can you tell me more about it some uh yeah so we are going to gamescom uh, and uh, we are going to be showcasing our game at gamescom uh, at the india pavilion uh, it's been conducted by scpc uh, and also um, we had been selected for another uh, side event at uh, the one of the biggest side events that happens at gamescom uh, which is courage cologne uh we have been selected out of uh, 40 games that are going to be showcased there uh, we are one of them uh, so recently we had uh, gotten i had last year gone to gdc and i was just a visitor for that courage event and we are really fortunate that we just applied for it and just a year a year later we have been selected for that as the showcase there uh, so we are going to be meeting a lot of investors publishers and we are also going to go meet uh, other developers and other uh, um other uh, services or like people with other different kinds of technology that actually helps build better games uh, and like there are a lot of people a lot of departments in the game development scene that uh, that there's so many new kind of technologies being built so uh, attending uh, events like this has been like a massive leap in terms of uh, how we see ourselves and understand the gaming industry and the global gaming industry as well um so it's going to be really exciting for us we have been uh, working really hard uh, to get this build and the game new game mechanics into uh, the game and also take it forward so initially we had started this game as a mobile uh, only game but as we went forward uh, we have always wanted to make it for pc and console but right now we are at the stage where uh we have hit that development uh, milestone where it's really good that uh, people can enjoy this game uh, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun in for pc and console so here at gamescom uh, we're going to be showcasing both the pc and the mobile build <coughs> okay and did you meet any like minded uh, founders there any like minded in the sense anybody who is uh, working in the space of indic uh, stories working with indic stories there or is it uh, uh, in, uh, or were there no other teams uh no there are like when we started this journey i think there was only one game called raji that had come out uh, after like we uh, mm-hmm. kind of yes. uh, decided but that was the game that actually um, became successful and put the word out that yes indian games indian storytelling games are do have a market and people actually love it not only in india but also globally and internationally accepted as well um but uh, i think uh, of course we have to challenge ourselves and also we want to be competitive about uh, what we are again kind of building compared to other games as well and i think what uh, we are doing uh, is like we going into the depths of the 
uh, ancient lores and scriptures and where we ourselves are researching it and giving it to players in a easier uh, format uh, or through the form of a game experience so that they kind of slowly and subtly kind of get uh, tuned and uh, understand the kind of uh, ethos that uh, our culture speaks and there have been a lot of games and a lot of game developers who are exploring these as well um not many have yet to be come out but uh, we have uh, participated in events like IGDC as well like for two years uh, uh, before this as well and we have seen a huge growth in uh, games that are being built not only from the dharmic uh, uh, perspective but also like from the ancient indian uh, history historical perspectives as well so there are a lot of single play games rpg games uh, multiplayer games a uh, couple of them and uh, yep yeah, it's really growing and there are a lot of games coming that actually highlight our indian culture and our history as well in fact in hyderabad like itself uh, keeps... yeah. no no uh, let's continue uh, in hyderabad itself there is another gaming studio called devas versus asuras a big toshin studio they're building a game called devas they are also focused on uh, building dharmic stories and uh, stories that resonate with our indian uh, culture that's great more power to this space more power to people who are working in this uh, but one point that you mentioned it needs even more underlining and i think i mentioned it before as well ki uh, games provide an immersive immersive experience unlike any other movies you can watch and then you can forget songs can stick in your mind but they don't give you the feeling of you being the protagonist you being the player who is actually navigating the world but games allow that freedom so this can be a great avenue for spreading our own lore for teaching children what even when stories are taken from our itihasas or our puranas they can be better depicted through games if the game is true to its core and true to the origin story then i think it's a great Uh, it's a great avenue for people to learn from and just on that point before we come to a close and wrap this conversation i would like both of your advices on people budding developers who wish to enter this space and who have the passion like you did a few years ago but who are hesitant on entering this what would be your advice to them um my advice is like like you said you know we got to be true to what we're trying to build uh, the context and we have to be true to ourselves and like dheeraj said uh, we started off to build a game first and the company because we wanted to build an amazing game rather than thinking about like how successful it would be or how much money we would make that was like secondary later we always focused on building the game first and the process uh, most people would be traditional in approaching game development and uh, i mean that that works that that is something that works but sometimes uh, you know starting or building a game is always a difficult task like we might not have all the resources or the team that we have so you might have to cut corners and at that point of time you know you got focus on your strengths rather than what you kind of lack so through that you can definitely make it successful out there and uh, yeah keep building game game development industry it's in in the rise and it's it's larger than film ott and music industry combined all over the world for a lot of people who might not know that um and i would let <laughs> dheeraj so like uh, i would actually say that you know making a game is like an art so it's it's not a like a, this is a process where then you may make a missing musical product is basically like an art so like whatever you do that passion has to be there so whatever you are actually this in working on you have to be this in passion so like th- that is actually the one that's in basically like the mo- most important and also um so it is key the audience the audience so i i self like uh, since i'm like the gameplay designer and uh, creative director as well in that sense like when i want to play a game i want to impress myself first and i see myself as an audience at that point of time i don't uh, 
uh think of uh, or like kind of resonate with like this is my game or this is our game like that right so we play the game as just a gamer and you should be as critical about your game and yourself as you would be about any other game in the sense like while kind of uh, experiencing the feel and like kind of judging how the game actually is going and progressing so that is also one of another point absolutely i iterate and keep the critical eye alive of the gamer and failures may come but success is yours if you persist at it thank you thank you somitri thank you dheeraj for this wonderful conversation we hope to catch up again with you soon and we hope all the success to you and i'll be linking the uh, link for own the game and brahman studios at, at the end of this conversation so listeners do check that out as well thank you again all for listening shivatri namaste Thank you so much Anshuman thanks so much